Jim Lynn here. Welcome to episode 9 of Mr Lynn's Workshop. What do you do if you find yourself in a suboptimal situation? Get your brew and let's find out. Just to recap, so far in the production of the spars we have cut the tapers on the ends of the main spars, that's the wider boards and the rear spars. The next thing we did was to cut the shallow rebates on the end of one of the main spars, as you can see here. And if, if you remember, we did that with the router plane and then the skew block plane. Now, when we came in the other day to cut the remaining shallow rebates on the other wing spars, we decided to take some measurements of, of this one, uh, just to check that everything was as it should be. And in fact, we did discover that the thickness data was out of family. Or in other words, the rebate was sub-optimised in the Z-axis. My wife said, so you made a mistake then? And, you know, I'll confess, I have to say that uh, you know, I had no idea what she was talking about. So, faced with a sub-optimal situation, pilots rely on a decision-making mnemonic called DODAR, which stands for Diagnose, Organise, Decide, Action, Review. So the diagnosis is... 0.3 millimeter too much wood on each side of the rebate. Organise, nobody ever knew what that meant. Decide, we're going to have some tea. Action, we made that tea. Review, yep, very nice tea, but we still have to do something about this. So when we were rechecking everything, we discovered that this marking gauge was set too shallow, and too shallow by a good nearly half a millimeter. So this is the cause of the problem because we used the mark it made on the edge uh, as the point to which we cut with the router plane. Um, how it got misset, don't know. It could have been dropped, uh, could, could have slipped whilst we were tightening it. But the trouble is that we used these tram lines to support the router whilst we were cutting. Um, and of course because we thought we'd done everything correctly, we planed them off again with the skew block plane. So now we've no means of supporting the router to take that extra 0.5 millimeter cut off. The funny thing is that we did notice that this piece of aero ply wasn't quite flush with the top surface of the main spar, but we were tired. I think we just convinced ourselves that that was okay. So the task is to take another half a millimetre or so off each side of the uh, rebate. Uh, the problem is that we removed the tram lines, so the answer is to put the tram lines back. So we've marked them again on this uh, piece of wood, and then we hunted around to find something that was the same thickness as the depth of the rebate that we already cut. And we found uh, some 300 mil rulers, um, which were exactly the right depth, so they'll do. So what we did was we um, we oiled one side, the upper side, and then we oiled the underside of the router plane. And uh, the side that wasn't oiled grips the wood and the router plane holds the ruler in place. So that's the solution that we uh, found to the problem. And so all we have to do now is just simply cut the rest of the rebates. Before we took any shavings with the router plane, we put some knife lines in at the edge of the tram lines uh, just to stop splits. Some very shallow knife lines, we're not going down that far. The next thing to do was to set some depth of cut lines in on the edge of the board and we used a different marking gauge set to about half a millimetre. So now it's just a case of going at it with the router plane. As you can see, the router plane quite, worked quite well on these um, rulers used as tram lines. Uh, although Anthony's holding them down at the moment, we found that in fact they didn't need to be. The friction between the underside of the ruler and the wood was greater than the friction between the underside of the router plane and the top side of the ruler, which meant that with my downward pressure, uh, they stayed in place quite well. So. Um, that's it, we just worked our way on both sides, um, getting rid of the excess half millimetre of wood. And then of course used the skew block plane to get rid of the, the new tram lines that were left behind. So after that we carried on and cut the shallow rebates on the other three spars, 
uh, this is one of the rear spars uh, and now it's time to cut them all to their final length so I'm just creating a mark to cut to on this rear spar enemy of sawing is vibration so if you can put some pressure here without getting in the way of the camera This is my cross cut 10 inch saw made by Shane Skelton, absolutely beautiful saw, so easy to use, tracks the line perfectly with no real effort from me. It's that whistle, that's it perfect. And then the sound changes tells you you get near the end, so you can press, press there now. Okay. Very, very light. Yep. This is just the loose fibers I'm taking off. It's not actually chamfering or anything. That's all the shallow rebates cut on all four wing spars and the wing spars themselves cut to their final length. Some more joinery still to do but we'll do that next time. So I thought I'd take a look at uh, some of the saws that I have. I um, don't have that many saws but the ones I do have are extremely high quality. Um, these saws here are made by Shane Skelton of Scarborough and I have five of his saws. Um, you can see um, there's a little extra one up the top left there, that's a Lee Nielsen dovetail saw. Um, but there's an interesting story behind the handles of these saw, saws. As you can see that the handles are made of a dark wood, it's in fact walnut and Shane was telling me that um, he knew I was a pilot when I ordered these saws and I wanted walnut and he had this walnut that came from a place called Wydale Hall near um, Brompton in uh, near Scarborough and that was the place where the very first human flight took place a flight made by um, an employee of George Cayley who made a glider and it took, took place in those grounds and the walnut tree came from those grounds. I think that's pretty fantastic. Yeah, it's, pretty, it's a really nice thing to do and it means quite a lot to me, the fact that these handles came from that estate with my link to aviation. Now, uh, what we have here at the very front, this one is the um, London pattern tenon saw filed cross cut. And that one there is the London pattern tenon saw filed rip cut interesting story about this one um, for, for a while I I didn't feel that the rip saw cut properly when doing rip cuts and it wasn't until I took them to Shane for sharpening in 2019 and told him there's something wrong with this rip saw it doesn't cut properly anyway he found out that it wasn't the rip saw at all it was a cross cut saw now these teeth are so tiny that I couldn't tell and the trouble was I'd marked it up with a big X on it uh, and that just compounded the problem but right down here he's helped me out by stamping in a little X now these all four of these saws that you can see here uh, were very well used in the building of these workshops P particularly these two this is the rip saw and that's the uh, cross cut hand saw that saw there particularly cut every single large timber that makes up these workshops now the rip saw didn't get that much use, but they never do get much use. Um, I did use them to rip some floorboards along their length. Um, and the two tenon saws got uh, a lot of use making the wind window frames and doors and things like that. So they were heavily used and uh, so easy to use and so nice. Now this one here, 
is my latest one and it is a bit of an indulgence this one it's a dovetail saw it's a chippendale dovetail saw and the handle is uh, in purple heart which i think you'll agree is a really nice wood um, i got that um last year in 2020 as a retirement present to myself and one of the in fact the very first expensive saw that i ever bought was this dovetail saw by lee nielsen rip cut dovetail saw I bought that a way back in 2005 specifically to go on David Charlesworth's dovetailing course and that's seen a lot of use as well um, I might file that cross cut now that I've got the Chippendale for dovetails but uh, that's all the saws I have um, well tell a lie I do have a, a mitre box and I've got a couple of these throwaway saws that I use for plywood you can't use these uh, skeleton saws in plywood uh, the resin would just blunt them so um, that, that's all my saws hope you enjoyed that well that's it for episode 9 everyone why not tune in to episode 10 where we're bound to be doing something suboptimal so until then I'm Jim Lynn thanks for watching <laughs>